Hi, my name is Pauline Ryland, Intimacy Whisperer, and I work as an intimacy and sex coach and educator. So it's quite a funny story how I got involved uh, as being an intimacy and sex coach and educator. I would uh, started studying NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, and it's working with the mindset and subconscious and hypnotherapy and uh, a few different areas in, in that field. And I was with a friend and we were going through a process um, to find our niche. And I knew that I didn't want to be a business coach or a business consultant. And my thoughts were a bit around being you know, a life coach or a health and um, uh, emotional well-being coach. And every time I was talking about this with my girlfriend, she literally kept slamming her fist in her hand and kept saying, boring. To the point where I just felt like my back was against the wall. I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to say next. You know, she's slamming me. And the next thing out of my mouth comes the word sex and sexuality. And she just points at me and goes, that's it. That's what you should be doing. You know more about sex than anybody I know. And I just sat there and went, oh my God, I don't know about that. And it just pushed all my buttons. And I really wasn't sure and sort of sat with that for a bit and let it perturbate and we went off to a training and nothing had been sent to the two guys that we were doing the training with and suddenly they were calling me the sex coach and I'm like what the hell you know how did this happen and my girlfriend had not said anything to them so it was like spirit was weaving its little way in already um, so I thought oh well that's what I'll do I'll, I'll give it a go I'll apply the principles of an NLP coach so looking at the problem looking at where the person or couple would like to go to and then going back to the problem and going below the surface and really digging down below the surface to find out what the core issues were and then coming up with strategies and procedures to move them from A to B so that's how I started um, yeah so obviously there's a lot more to it than that, but that's, uh, that was when I actually started my practice, which was about eight years ago. So some of the areas that I work with is, well, one of my main areas that I specialise in is libido coaching for both men and women. So for women that have lost their spark, have lost their libido, or have never actually really had a libido, uh, and women that haven't experienced orgasm. So I take them through various processes to uh, reactivate that libido and to actually orgasm for the first time, which is pretty cool. Nothing like getting a text from a client going, yes, I've just had an orgasm. So that makes my heart sing. Um, and for men, I work with their libido issues, which is obviously around premature ejaculation and erection um, functions, so maintaining erections. So they're the sort of main areas I work on, but there's lots of other variances that I work with as well. So it could be, you know, relationships, connections, going off track, couples that have been together for a long time that just need a bit of a spark and need to reconnect. Uh, so they can go another 20, 25 years. I find a lot of people that I work with, it's whilst it some, can be some sexual challenges around intimacy and connection, it invariably comes back to some form of woundings that they've experienced. So I work a lot around the emotional aspect with people and people's sort of self-worth and, and their self-doubt and self-love. They're quite key areas that I work with. And I also do something really quite different, which is called um, scar remediation work. And part of one of my trainings is as a somatic sexological body worker and we actually learn how to work with scars. So for women that is huge because some women experience pain when they have sex and it's unknown pain. They go to the doctor, they go to the, the gynos and they've really got no reason or no idea as to why they're experiencing that pain. And so what I do is a process called vaginal mapping, working with organic castor oil, that actually is a process where we break down the pain, but pain that's internally and it just reverses. So sometimes it can be three, four, five sessions and they go back to having a normal sex life with no pain. So that's pretty phenomenal work and also helps with desensitising the genitals, which can get numb from pain because the brain signals to the genital areas, the, the, the neurological pathways will switch off so that numbness and, um, can be created from that. So it's about getting back in touch with that. And also with men, working with the same way with men around, um, sometimes with men that have been circumcised, that can be quite sensitive. So it's about lessening that sensitivity so that they can actually experience pleasure instead of that, the sensitivity or pain that they experience as well and also working with men that have um, Peyronie's disease and repairing that. 
what I do is quite holistic. Uh, it's really working with mind, body and spirit. So I have an NLP um, certification, so that's working with the mindset. I'm a certified Tantra teacher and facilitator, so that's sort of really working with the spiritual side of things. And then the somatic sexological body worker, which I thought was the key ingredient that was missing was the body. So it's really working with mind, body and spirit because let's say um, a man has premature ejaculation, which has been lifelong. Well, yes, that's a physical thing, but it's also going to be really upsetting and screwing with his headspace and his mindset so and it's really disconnected so we need to bring him back into his body and get him connected teach him new breathing patterns and also work with all the emotional stuff that's sitting there so it's it's really is always three parts it's never just one thing so i think that that's quite key as well okay so i might share a few little tips with you all around um, intimacy and connection and so one of the key things i work with is about connection and connecting to our heart space and connecting to our bodies and getting out of our heads which is various processes that i do for that and connecting to heart and genitals as well because everything's just so disconnected and we live in such a disconnected society and sex in particular is and has become very disconnected especially with porn and so one of the things also that I work with is around um, really feeling into our space, you know, and, and feeling into our yeses and our noes because we've been conditioned to say yes. And often we do so many things, not even in the bedroom, but we're saying yes to things all the time that we really don't want to do. And if you think back to when you're younger, everyone's had an Auntie Mavis, for example, that's this big, huge woman with great big breasts that comes to greet you and mum says, go give Auntie Mavis a hug. And you're like going, no, I don't want to. And Auntie Mavis comes and scoops you up and hugs you and holds you into, into her bosoms. And you're just going, oh my God, this is the most horrible thing ever. But you're forced to actually do it. And so this is something that sets up a pattern with us within our bodies to not recognise what feels right for us in that moment. In the next moment, it might be okay. So I really teach people how to feel into their yeses and noes through a variety of games, um, which can just sometimes can start as just being standing opposite each other and walking towards each other and really feeling into, no, no, that's enough, stop. I know, okay, you can come forward a little bit more. So feeling into that yes and no. And there's no um, right way or wrong way. It's about really feeling into your body about what's right and wrong. And then you can extend that with touch and going, yes, that's okay, no, stop. And you can, you can, there's lots of different games and things that we can play. And I think that's really important because, you know, there's so many times in the bedroom, I know, especially with women, that they experience something in, in the bedroom that they actually are not really comfortable with, but we don't, for some reason, have a voice to say no, or I'm not comfortable with that, or I don't like that. I know that's been the case for me as well, and something I've had to work on very clearly. So it's really empowering to be able to play those games and to feel into your body, go, you know what, that's not feeling okay, and I can say that, and it's okay to say no. So I think that's um, really important to learn and understanding um, around yeses and noes. And that you don't have to have an explanation with the noes if you don't want. It's about listening to yourself and really intuiting what's right for you in that moment. So yeah, I think doing those sorts of exercises can be really good to help build up your own intuition because we all have intuition, but some of us think, oh no, I'm not intuitive. However, these sorts of things where you're tuning into yourself and going inwards to connect to yourself and the more connected you are and the less you're out of your head but in your body and in your heart space really helps to open up that intuition. And I know for myself with the work that I do, but not only the work that I do, but all the work that I do on myself and have done on myself for years and years and years is all about having the awareness of what's not working and then looking in and digging through, but having that intuition just just compound in so much more from what it used to be. I would, you know, 10 years ago, I would have never said that I was intuitive, whereas now I'm damn intuitive and I'm very aware. And so I know when I need to question or ask or whatever it is. So one of the key things that I work with is connection because I believe that we are really disconnected from ourselves and um, our bodies and our sexuality and if we're disconnected from ourselves then how can we have really amazing 
connected sex if we're in our heads. So one of the things is, that I teach is how to get out of your head and in your body. So just very quickly, a great tool to use is to um, close your eyes, breathe into your heart space and take a few breaths and then bring your attention down to your feet and just scan your whole body and not have to fix anything or go, oh, my shoulders are a bit slouched, I better straighten them up. Just have the awareness that, oh, my shoulders are slouched. So just being aware and in tune to what's going on. Oh, there's a bit of a niggle in my belly right now. Okay, just breathe through that. Keep breathing and keep checking your body and getting in your body. That gets you out of your head. Another thing that I teach is um, connecting into the heart and genitals. So again, hand on heart, hand on genitals and breathing in through the heart, down and exhaling out through the genitals and just repeating that. Now we all know we can't breathe in and out of our hearts and our genitals, but when you set an intention, the energy follows, which amplifies the potency of it. So by doing that actual process, what it does is you're breathing in heart energy, you're sending that heart energy, which is love, down to the genitals, which is sort of, I guess, giving you into a place of gratitude and forgiveness because we have so much expectation and demand and judgment on our genitals and we have so much expectation and demand and judgment that our partners and previous partners have put on us and our genitals. So this creates a really nice cycle of love and forgiveness and gratitude for what we have and connects us even more. And then with couples, a really simple tool, which is a tantric tool, is I get them to eye gaze. So it's left eye to left eye, and that's known as connecting into the windows of the soul. And just sitting close, but not clo not touching, just, you know, like a little bit apart. Taking a few breaths, closing your eyes, and then opening your eyes and, and looking left eye to left eye and putting a timer on for five minutes, which seems like a very long time. So maybe start with two minutes and then build it up. And the idea is just to sit there and what this does, it just drops the layers off. It starts peeling off all those masks that we all carry. We're all good at having different masks on and allows us just to be and be seen fully for who we are and in that space. And so, of course, that can be vulnerable. Even in a loving relationship, there, there can be a level of vulnerability about being really seen. So sometimes tears can happen and that's okay. It's about the other party just holding the space. And the more and more that you can do this eye gazing, I get my couples to do it every day, it just creates this big giant bubble all around you that nothing else matters. You're in like this little bubble together and you're just connecting and going deeper and deeper. And I've saved relationships with just that technique alone, you know, so it's a pretty potent exercise to do together. really important with touch and to be touched and touching that you're honoring yourself in, with a yes and no and that you're respectful of the other person that you're with and when someone's had some form of sexual abuse it can be very hard to receive that touch and so you might find if you're with a partner that has been abused that they might flip in and out well, sometimes they're like, yeah, 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 and other times they're like, no, 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 and it's, it's almost like it's sending you mixed signals. However, they're not really aware that that's what they're doing. It's just the conditioning because it, they don't feel safe. And so that's a whole lot of other areas that I work with, um, with men and women that have had some form of sexual abuse. But a great thing to do with, with touch and consent, consensual touch is to do some little exercises where you can just say, I'd really like to give you a hand massage and the other person can feel into it and feel if that's a yes or a no for them. And if it's a yes, then the partner picks up and massages the hand. But if they start moving away from the hand and going up the arm, well then that's not really consensual, you haven't really asked and it's actually not okay. So it's about sticking to the agreement, you ask for a hand touch, you're giving a hand touch. It doesn't mean an arm or going up to the shoulders, it's just because you're feeling good. So there's that one way of, of looking at touch. Another way of touch is there's lots of different ways that you can touch. So you can touch for the sake of um, the person receiving the touch so that they're receiving that benefit of the touch and the stroke. You can touch because you want to touch and see how it feels for you to touch them. So there's two different sides. And then you can touch in different ways. You can touch very, very lightly. We can touch more firmly or can touch very f like feather, feathery and experience. You know, you've got your palm in your hand or you can go to the back of your hand and just experience different ways of what it feels like for you 
but also then you can switch the intention to what does that feel like for you if I touch you this way. So there's lots of ways of experimenting uh, with how you can do touch and how you can receive and give and always checking in with your yeses and noes for sure. One of the things I guess that this leads to is about conscious and being conscious with your touch and so to be conscious with your touch and connection it's about being present that's key if you're not present then none of that's going to happen and it's also about stepping away from the old paradigms of sex if you think about sex generally most people are in their head when they're having sex they've got a tick checklist I've got to do this, I've got to do that, then I've got to go give, give some oral and I'll say it's my turn because I gave her oral and it's tick for tat and it's like, no, 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 no. That just does not work. You've got to get out of your head. You know, sex is an energy that you follow and allow to unravel. It's not a checklist. You know, a lot of people are going for bigger and better. Oh, I want a better orgasm than yesterday. I want a bigger experience. And, and that's just the wrong way of going about it because when you're going about it that way, you're missing out on a whole lot of all the little subtleties. You know, I'll have some women come to me and say they've never really experienced much of an orgasm because they're expecting the big yee yahoo thing, you know, Harry met Sally. But when they ex have the expectation in their head for that, they're missing out on all the little subtleties that are going on in their body. So the more present you are, the more you can feel those things. Allow the body to unravel, you know, be touching and exploring and not, you're conscious, but you're not conscious of exactly what you're doing because you're allowing it to unravel. And suddenly you might go, oh my God, this is where I am. Okay, this is nice. Because you're allowing, you're following the energy and that's what sex is, it's an energy. So it's allowing it to unfold and unravel the way it's going to be instead of dictating what's going to happen or how it's going to be or I'm going to do this position or we're going to do that and then we're going to do that. And when you can start to allow that to unravel that way, that's what conscious sexuality is about, about tuning in and being present and just following the energy.